Hello everyone, you have to ignore the mess, there's things I'm working on, this you've seen the video for already. That's going to be a soon project I feel, but that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is what's in this box, and you can see pieces of it poking out already. Okay, don't you love when you do things on camera and they don't do as expected? We have the lighting kit, which I'm going to open and take a look at and maybe plug in and see how it works. And it fills the box. We have the Katanga right here. So let me get this out of the way because, well, no one wants to look at the empty box. We want to look at this guy, right? Been plenty of videos of this online of people getting pre uh pre-production models and building them i'm looking i seem a little distracted right now because i know i've got one of the really old versions of this and i'm looking for it and might pull it down and add it to this video and i don't see it although i know it's over there and it was near the bottom of one of my piles okay and I meant to get, oh, I found it. It's not this kit, okay? It's the old one from, yeah, it's from the original series. So anyhow, let's take a look at what's in here. Let's take a look at what's in the lighting kit. I'm going to go ahead and start with the lighting kit because, well, it's a smaller box and it's easier to get into. And you have to open the plastic wrap. It's got 27 LEDs. Now by looking at this, I suspect it does not have a power supply. So I'm not sure how it's gonna be powered. It might be powered by batteries. We're gonna find out pretty quickly because it opens up pretty easily. It's got a battery pack. That's a disappointment. And it looks like it's got four batteries, so it's running on six volts. I don't like battery packs, I'm not going to lie. And the battery pack probably goes inside the model. So I'll have to hack that apart. What you get are a lot of LEDs. And since these are only LEDs and I don't see anything special about them, it should be able to run just fine. What you're also getting are some red parts. And I'm assuming that's torpedo launchers. And these are side panels for the engines. And this will be back. This will be this big piece right here. That's what that is. Okay. Anyhow, and underneath you get a piece of photo etch. And what's good about this photo etch, you might ask, is that it helps with the lighting. Because light doesn't pass through brass. Brass absorbs light. So you have a, some photo etch here, which has all the really tiny windows on it. Okay. And that should help a lot. And you got the directions. I'm not going to worry about opening the directions to the lighting kit. Not right now, because I don't really see a purpose to opening the directions. So what you're getting basically is a bunch of LEDs and a photo etch. If someone else puts out that photo etch kit, then you're in good shape. Now I don't know about the clear parts. If there's no clear parts, you're going to fabricate your own clear parts which some people are good at. Mr. Tomodachi, I don't really need you making that mess. That noise in the background is my cat tearing up something. One of the cats, and not Thunderpaws, Thunderpaws' uncle. I never really explained that. The two of them are related. One is the uncle of the other. Tomodachi's two years older than Thunderpaws, and he is his uncle. I didn't even get them from the same breeder. And yes, they are a specific breed of cat. They're what's called a Maine Coon. All right, so I got the plastic wrap off. We can look at what's inside the box in a second. Let's take a look at the outside. 27 LEDs and lighting kits. They're advertising the lighting kit here. It says all wiring included, no soldering required, power supply, and plug and play circuit board, hidden inside model. See, I don't like power supplies hidden inside models. Just never been a fan of that sort of thing. Okay. 
Um, blinking beacons, colored clear plastic parts, photo etch parts, and that's in a different language, probably French if I had to guess. And the side here shows the decal sheet and optional resin bridge drone, optional resin bridge dome. I haven't seen that before, so that is not included in the kit, I think. We got our decals, we're gonna find out when I open it. Um, Fendic Half Studio Scale Miniature. And then the back, it's showing the width and the length. 17 inches wide, 24 inches long. A full color paint decal guide, authentic details, and optional rear torpedo, torpedo cap and support hole cap. Okay. And precision molding. Yeah, well, they're going to say that. So let's open it up and see what we got inside this. I like the box art on the front. This has always been one of my favorite designs from Star Trek is the Klingon ships. Always one of my favorites. So you do get the clear parts. The same clear parts you would get in the lighting kit, only clear. So, you, if you're good with clear paint, you could just paint them red. So you don't need the lighting kit for that. Okay. Decal sheet. You don't get much in the way of decals, but there's never many markings on the Klingon ships. You have decals that go around the lighting. In other words, you have decals that go inside these trenches here, which is good. Okay. Looks like I got a defective directions. There's a hole in mine. Yep, there's a hole, but the part numbers are there. We'll come back to that in a minute. She is molded in black. Okay, molded in black. Very nice. The windows are already opened. The bags, not open. I could open the bag real quickly. This is not one I hope to resell one day. It's one I would like to build soon, but you know, when I pull a 18-hour shift last, like last Sunday, I'm not going to get to it anytime soon. Molded in black, so the black plastic will probably block light. And again, you have the windows open already, which is good. Okay, uh, but these don't, these side bits don't have the windows open. But they are recessed, so if you're patient with a micro drill, no, they're opened. I can see through those. Yeah, they're open all the way across. So all the windows are open. So that's a bonus for those that like the light. Windows are already open on the kit. Now we have the neck and the bridge section. And one of my concerns is how does this neck attach? And this thing is not small. Look at the size of this thing right here. Compared to some of the earlier versions, this thing is definitely not small. Right, I wish the plastic was a little less uh, transparent. And I'm hoping the painting guide is not on the box. Looks like the painting guide is part of the box. Isn't that fun? Well, it's cheaper for them that way. Where's my hobby knife? There it is. I'm going to go ahead and open these bags so we can see. It doesn't look like the kit has a whole lot of parts. My big problem with life right now is I, ha I can get by an hour about every three weeks to come in here and work. It's got some nice detail molded into it. That is true. You're going to have to paint this thing. And again, my worry is this neck and sagging this neck. I watched some videos from Ram too. They assured that that neck is not going to sag, but time will tell. Ah, and it does have the resin bridge cap. So that is included. And we have their normal stand. Big version, big, big model. And then we have the two wings. Okay. And the wings have nice detail on them. Let me open one. It may not open both. It may just only open one. And part up, pull it out partially. So we can get a good look at it. Okay. It has nice detail on it. And it's 
raised and recessed at the same time. The panel lines are recessed. So if you've got a really sharp hobby knife and you know what you're doing masking, this won't be too hard to mask for all the different colors you're using. It really won't be. I expect there'll be aftermarket paint masks before too long. Here's the bottom half of the kit. Again, I'm not going to pull it out all the way. I'm going to pull this piece that's sliding around out, though, because that's the underside of the... and it's separated. It didn't separate too badly. Here's the underside of the wing. Again, the detail is very well molded in. This would be easy to mask by the way they did it. This over here won't be so easy to mask because that's recessed and it's recessed not very deeply. But everything over here will be real easy to work with. And we have all the windows are open here. No, not all of them. Look from the back side. But they are deep enough, the ones that aren't open, like these right here, you'll be able to open easily. They tried to open them. You look at the back, and if I were to put a light behind this, they tried to open them. They just weren't successful. One more. One more bag. And then I'm pretty sure the full color painting guide is on the box. It comes... R2. We don't need that language in the house. The full color painting guide is part of the box, as you can see. And it does go from side to side and it does have the color call color call call outs they're all testers paints uh, testers enamel which I haven't worked through my airbrush I haven't worked with testers enamels in a long time I have been working with their acrylics recently but not their enamels those videos will be up probably in the next couple of weeks and the red is the tester acrylic I was using Vallejo acrylics to brush paint with, and I'm not doing that again. Anyhow, off topic. I tend to get off topic occasionally, especially when I'm really, really tired. We're looking at our last piece here. Well, it's nice that that's a common paint for the color callouts, which means I could walk to Hobby Lobby and get that, and not not walk, but I'd go to Hobby Lobby and get those colors. All right, and the engines have nice details too. There are some holes on the sides of the engine, so I'm assuming there's some lighting in there. I haven't looked. Here's the rear part where the torpedo bays go. And I have not looked at the uh, direction jet, so we don't know how this thing's going to go together. So let me put things back in. I put them aside in a specific order, hopefully. I can get it back in the box because someone usually sits and engineers how these things go in and out of boxes. Oh yeah, and I'm dropping stuff everywhere. But I got it all back in the box where it fits. What's in there? Oh, LEDs. Lots of LEDs. I've been restocking my LEDs, but they're colors I normally don't have. Let me put this aside. And let me open up the directions. Okay. And I can zoom a little bit on those directions. Right like that. All right, assembly instructions. It is a fold-out style. And let me find step one, which will be over here. Step one is you put the neck together. I mean the bulb on the front of the bridge together. Okay. And follow arrows as a guide through each subassembly. So you start here, go here, go here, go here. And there's some optional parts. That's probably where that photo etch goes. I have to look at lighting kit directions. Why don't I do that? I wasn't going to, but it might not hurt to have those instructions with me as we go through this. And it's a good thing I looked over because I did not get all the parts back in the box for this. And I need to. Okay, it'd be bad to find parts later. Okay, so it's showing you some of the photo etch does go on the front of the uh, bulb. 
like said. Use your wiring guide. And you're going to put the battery cover underneath the top. And apparently the top is going to come on and off. I see potential for scratch paint and various other issues there, which I don't like and it shows where all the photo edge pieces go and a lot of them go on the front of the ship because the detail can't be molded in plastic very well and the leds are numbered and i guess you could lay them out on here and it tells you which one gets plugged in where okay and they do have some blinking ones all right so it does show that in, in the optional parts there are the ones that are listed as optional Here's the bulb, the rest of the bridge. Then you put your neck together. And once you get the neck together, I want to see how it assembles to the ship. I like the Klingon watermark in the background of this. And there's the engines being assembled. And there's the top part of the ship being assembled, the back with optional parts again. And then you put together the main body you finish the back and then you put it all together so I'm still not too sure how this next gonna assemble okay so I'm not sure how this is going together and the lighting kit this has nothing about how where the lights go on it and I okay the lighting kit shows where the lights run to here let's turn it over properly so the lighting kit shows where each light goes. There are lights in the engines. And there are clear plastic parts to carry the light down to certain areas. Okay? And it shows the battery in the center. Now, that battery's running 6 volts. Uh, I bet if I put it on 5 volts, it'll run just a little dim. I might try that just to see. It, 5 volts won't hurt any of the circuits. Most of the circuits are rated anywhere from 5 to 12, depending on what they're doing. Now, if they're using some, like, uh, PIC program chip, then no, uh, I may not do that. But I'll open the battery box and might be able to see what kind of circuits they're using on this. So let's take a look. On off switch there, not accessible from the outside the model. And again, this is just a battery box. The LEDs themselves might be the blinkers. Open that way. Oh, it's running on four and a half volts. Which means you could USB power this guy real easily. And that would not be that hard to do. All right. So happy to see it's four and a half volts. I don't see any chip on this. These, uh, there's some little resistors on there. But that's to be expected. I do not see. Let me open this. I'm looking for a circuit board. Because they might have just be using flashing LEDs. And the LEDs themselves flash. all labeled no no circuit board anywhere that's interesting all right well we took a look there's no circuit board and that means you could bypass the battery pack and light it how you want pretty easily up Again, I'm willing to bet USB power would light it just fine. You might have to put a big resistor on your power supply lead in so you don't overwhelm things. But outside that, it would be fine. You just need to drop it 0.5 volts. If you know what the current is, it's not hard to drop it 0.5 volts. And with a battery pack like this, I can measure the current being pulled through the batteries. So once I measure the current through the batteries, I could actually tell what resistor to use. And now I could USB power it instead of running it through the battery pack, which would be buried inside, which I do not like. I don't like batteries buried inside my models. That means taking apart and scratching paint and all sorts of stuff. 
I know some people like it. Bandai seems to think it's great with some of their uh, Yamato Space Battleship Yamato models. I happen to disagree. And I know others do too. All right. Well, there we go. There's a look at what's inside the box. And look inside the Katinga itself. And I hope you enjoyed the review. I'm going to get it up today. I had to come back and add an extra bit. I didn't see this. Tamiya paint callouts right here. Because I was reading the paint callouts on what? Wait a minute. Those are Tamiya colors. I already have all these colors on my paint rack. Except for that one. <laughs> Turn single amber. No, I got clear. I'm uh, looking. No, I don't see it. So I'd have to get that one. I don't see clear amber. I see the other ones, though. I have clear red, which I probably don't need. I have flat red. I have all of them. And there, I have every single one of those. So I already have the paints, which makes me happy. And putting this together isn't going to be a problem. Painting it is going to be the problem. So I'm going to do something before I would start on this. i got a Battlestar Galactica I'm about to build. And I'm going to light it, and it's one of the old school kits, so I'm not too worried about accurizing it, because the uh, Pegasus, no, not Pegasus, well, it is Pegasus now, the Mobius Models kit is far more accurate, and that's the one where I'd get some photo etch and work it with. The old school one, no, I'm not going to do any of that, simply because it's going to go in a movie room, and I just want it lit up. So anyone who walks in will go, wow, there's a Battlestar Galactica up there. Or they'll go, wow, what is that? But the model people, I wouldn't take it to a model show or something. It's just something for me to do to enjoy myself with. And I'd love to get started on this thing. It's just that this thing would be so much paint and so much time that I just don't have. Maybe this summer I can do it. Anyhow, I'll be back.